Welcome to our second quilting video. In this video we are going to quilt tree tree with this um, wavy-ish line that we're creating with circle rulers and then we're moving on to tree 4a where we're going to make whole circles. Um, if you want I'm also giving an option uh, here I'm giving options with every tree so and here you see a little free motion pattern with the wavy-ish lines that we did on tree one but then with little loop-ty loops so those are the three trees that we're going to quilt in this video let's get started Let's start with some vertical markings on our tree. And I'm not going to space them completely a ruler apart, but a little less. There we go, our horizontal markings for this block. If you have the circle set by Amanda Murphy, uh, you will have five different circles. And we you will use the second smallest today. So this is the one that we will, we will be using for this um, tree. So I will put the others aside. What we are going to do is to line up this guideline on the horizontal lines that we marked. So um, you're going to quilt around it, then move your ruler, quilt around it, move your ruler, and this way we will ease into using circles because when I start quilting I will let you know a few things that you have to keep in mind when ruling with circle <laughs> when quilting with circle rulers so the difference with quilting with a straight line ruler is that you will have to hold the ruler in place and the pressure on your ruler will change in direction. So the pressure comes from pushing your ruler softly against the ruler foot. So now the pressure is in this direction. So what you want to do is you want to hold the finger on or fingers on this side of the ruler because your ruler foot is on this side. But as soon as I quilt and I have my ruler in this direction, when I have pressure, on my ruler in that direction I will slip so I will have to um, also have pressure now in this direction so then it's a good thing to have my thumbs over here and then when I quilt on and my ruler is touching the ruler foot like this then I have to have a little pressure in that direction so then it won't be sufficient to have only pressure over here because then it will move but when I have pressure over here then it will stay in place. So that is something that we're going to practice with this tree. So that's also why we're only doing a partial um, curve, just a little bit to getting to know this ruler. And we're not going to make real scallops yet. We're just going to make well, it's a kind of a scallop shape, but um, you don't have to have any matching points or anything. Just going to make some curves and practice having pressure in the right direction. So now these two, uh, my thumb and my middle finger, have the most pressure. Now it's moving to my two thumbs. And now this finger will become important. So now the most pressure is on my finger and my thumb over here. Okay, that's the first row that we did. I'm moving all the way to this point because there is my second marking. And this is the design that you will repeat on all the marked lines that we made until you get to the bottom of the tree.
So I just decided to make some markings with a uh, water erasable marker. It's a fabric marker that's really easily erasable. So now you can see my markers more clearly, I think. And then you can see better what I'm doing. And just take your time and go slow. Get the feel of using something different than a straight ruler. Now we are going to run into our tree. Let's see how that goes. We are quite lucky, I guess, because we can move around the branch. So now we are on top over here and we just need to decide if we travel back down here so we can make our uh, shapes over here or we are going to travel over the top and then continue over here i think that has my preference so let's travel stage over the top and then i would like to uh, continue making this shape and not start a new shape over here you are going to line up your ruler a quarter inch away from the line because you need to keep your foot in mind. So you're not going to line it up like this, but you're going to line it up like this. And then you travel down until you touch your ruler. And now you know you're on the same line uh, as if it would were to continue through the trunk. See? That is perfect. Okay, now we are on this side. And if I want to continue this curve right now, I need to travel all the way down and up and then continue. But I also want to make some shapes here. So I think I'm just going to do those first and then travel back down. Let's see. Um, this space is a little bit smaller than this space. Uh, oops, let me zoom out a little bit. You can see what I'm pointing towards. So this space is a little bit smaller than this space. So I'm not going to line up my line on the bottom. I'm just letting it sink down a little bit. Like so. And then just stitch this. One more. Great, and then I'm going to travel all the way to there. And then I'm going to travel up a little bit and to the left. Let's see if I can find a spot where I need to be to finish this curve. So my line is not on my marking yet, so just need to travel up a little bit further. Now my line is on my marking. And I think I have over here, I have a little bit more than a quarter inch. So I'm just moving it back a little bit. Moving back down a few stitches and then finishing that curve. For this is not for this side it's not so uh, important how we're going to finish because this one uh, this curve finished over here somewhere so let's see if I will place this over here and then this one move back up a little bit then let it start over here so probably I can make yes I can make one shape over here There we go. Tree tree is done. Tree um, for A. 
I am going to mark a line through the center of the tree. And I do that because I think it's nice to have that circle line that we're going to quilt centered. And for this we're going to move one size up. So this one is one size bigger than the one that we just used. And we're going to use the inner circle to quilt. And as you can see over here, those black markings, those are the circles that we are going to make. So, um, yeah, we're going to start at the top and then work our way down and then do this side and then do that side. So let's just start and then you can see how this one is done. For this, it's important to first move your ruler in place um, before you lower your foot. So now you lower your foot and then you put it in place and let's see um, let's start with half a circle and that means that you let me put my quilt in place so starting with half a circle oops, I didn't bring my thread up <laughs> um, There it is. So for this I am lining up um, a black line over there. And the black line on the center line and a black line over here. So when I now stitch, first a few stitches in place. And when I stitch and I follow the inside of the ruler, see I made a half in half circle and now we've made a half circle I'm going to travel back a quarter of a circle so now we have a starting point to make a whole circle let's see if I can move this out of the way yes so um, what you line up is this line over here you line it up with the center line and then you make one circle. And now we are going to move one half circle down. Wonderful. So now again marking lining up this line over here and the black circle that's over here on the top you line it up with the circle that we just quilted so the difficulty here is keeping your ruler in place and moving uh, moving your quilt so you want to keep in mind that pressure that we just talked about so when I move in this direction I have pressure on this finger when I move down I will have pressure on my thumbs when I move now to that direction, I will have pressure on the fingers that I have on this side. And now I will have pressure on these fingers, preventing to, from my, my ruler from slipping to the top. So travel um, half circle back. And continue. And then we can move over to make it our second row of circles. So what we want is to have this circle lined up with the circle that we just quilted. So here I have the circle that I quilted around my tree trunk. And then this black circle we will put right over it. And you see a line here. And that will be on the center line that we quilted. 
Okay, so let's see what we can quilt from the circle right now. I'm just going to stop when I touch the edge of the tree. And now I'm going to move up until I am at the center top. And now I can move my ruler up a little bit. There we go. Oops, my circle's overlapping a little bit because I didn't have this quite in place and quite lined up over there. Let's see if I can move back over that line. Well, good enough. So I will move it up, try to line up this circle and line up this line with the center line. And let's see how much of a circle we can do here. Okay, there I touch the other circle, then I go back, and there I touch the edge of the tree. So you can leave your edge like this, but I am going to show you how you can fill it up um, if you want to. So what you need to do is to line up this black circle with this circle that you quilted. So I'm moving down and down until I can line up that black circle. And what you do then is make that tiny part of a circle until you reach the edge of your tree. And then you're going to stitch down until you can line up that black circle again. Moving down, trying to see if I can line up that black circle. And there we go. So I guess this half is now done. Um, I'm going to zoom out and show you. So first quilted that center line and then quilted this one. And now I've also made those tiny parts of circles. Uh, you don't have to do them if you like the design without them as well. But that completes the, the look and it makes it look like the circles just continue um, on the tree. So also the bottom of the tree is now done. So what we can do now is travel uh, around the tree trunk to this side and then start making these circles. Now I want to line up this black circle over here with the circle around the tree trunk and I don't want to line it up with my ruler under an angle so I need to travel a little bit that my ruler is um, pointing straight up there we go For the final tree in this video, so tree A, uh, <laughs> tree 4B, um, we're going to do something similar as we did for tree 1. So we're going to make up and down movements, but we're going to make little loops in there. So we're going to make kind of wavy-ish lines up and down and make little loops every now and then. Let me show you what I mean. So you're making a straight-ish line and now we're going to go back up. If you're more comfortable making the same movement every time you can turn your quilt around of course. And then we're going to go up. So every now and then you slow down a little bit. 
then make a kind of a curvy motion. Well, curvy motion, circle motion. So there you can see you're making these tiny rounded shapes. And uh, to not make it too uniform, I'm going to mix it up a little bit uh, to not switch left and right every time. Um, because here you see they will go in sync, but I like them to go a little bit um, randomly. So, uh, yeah, that is the idea. And this is just something that you have to get a little feeling for. So, uh, a good thing to just try out first on the test piece. Because you slow down a little bit and then you make a circle. So, it has, it will take some practice to get this in your hands, but I think it's a lovely challenge. A lovely variation on those straight-ish lines. And you can make these shapes as big and as small as you want, of course. You can do a lovely variation with this. My loops are quite small and I, I like that because it's a tiny tree. But you can go way bigger, of course. And also I'm making quite a lot of uh, loops. You can make straightish lines with just a little loop every now and then. That would also be nice. So... Oh, I just now noticed that I still have my uh, ruler food on. Let me change that for my open toe food. Yeah, so let's make some more wiggly lines with loops. And I think a point of attention is, if you see this little loop over here, it's kind of has a pointy side to it. So the challenge is to get nicely rounded loops. And when you exaggerate that movement uh, with your hands, it is to get that nice uh, swoop kind of motion so that it's really smooth. Um, I think that's the most difficult part. And because it's so tiny, so it's just a tiny movement that you make. So, um, yeah, maybe it is easier to start out with some larger loops, but just try it out on your test piece, see how it is for you, and uh, then decide on what you're going to do on your tree. There we go, another tree finished. So that was a fun free motion quilting pattern. Little loopy loops on tree 4B. And that's the end of the second quilting lesson. So we did the scallops um, with our circle ruler, then all circles on tree 4A and the final little loop-de-loop -loop with our free motion quilting. 
I hope you like this video and that you're going to give it a try. I'm sure you can do it. And then I will see you again in the next video. Bye!